Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the newest release by the company Dolce & Gabbana. And this one is called Dolce Peony. So make sure to stay tuned. So this fragrance was released in 2019. The perfumer behind this composition is Christophe Reynaud. Christophe Reynaud has done fragrances like Aura by Muglet. He's also done Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, the company Dolce & Gabbana has been quite busy this year. Obviously, this is a flanker of the original Dolce. And then they've also released Light Blue Sun, both the men's and the women's version. I actually went out and purchased both of them, one for myself, the other one for my wife. And I also purchased this one for my wife as well. Now, this one actually contains an ingredient called Mirabelle, which is a type of prune, and it actually gives off a very sweet and sometimes tart aroma. And so you have that compounded with notes like rose and carnation. There's also a little bit of ambroxan, a little bit of patchouli as well. And so it kind of reinvents the fruity floral genre by taking ingredients that are not commonly utilized. And so as opposed to notes like peach and apricot, which are found in many fruity floral fragrances, this one has that Mirabelle note, but there's also a little bit of pear in here as well. So it's fresh, it's fruity, it's floral. It's actually a combination of different things. I'm excited to tell you what I think about the smell in a little bit more detail. Let's start things off with the presentation. So the box for this fragrance is very nice. Uh, it has a faux ribbon here on the front. It's actually printed onto the box and it says Dolce and then Peony right below that. And it is Eau de Parfum Strength. On the bottom of the box, you will actually see the serial number punched into the box right on top of the UPC. The back of the box just has the ingredients and the e-commerce information. The bottle has an aesthetic that matches the box. I like how it kind of has this floral cap and it does have a real ribbon on the front here sitting on the base of the atomizer. All of the information is printed on the bottom of the bottle if you're looking to authenticate your purchase. The cap for this fragrance does click into place very securely. You can pick this one up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer is pretty wide. Let's continue with the smell. So this fragrance opens up very fresh. And I think a lot of that is probably on account of the note of ambroxan. So ambroxan is a synthetic that is supposed to be the synthetic counterpart of ambergris. Ambergris is basically an ingredient. It's an animalic ingredient. It comes from the sperm whale. They eat a lot of like krill and shrimp and they have a hard time digesting it. And so there is an enzyme that is produced. They end up regurgitating it. It's found floating in the middle of the ocean. A sea farm harvest it and it's super expensive. Ambroxan of course is the synthetic counterpart to it and so it's synthesized in a laboratory using petrol chemicals and so this one actually smells very fresh, very inviting. There's also a little bit of that Mirabelle note in there and so it kind of creates a sweetness to it but I don't think it overshadows the pear. I actually get a lot of that pear ingredient in here. Of course, it's not done as forcefully as it is in like Jimmy Choo for her, which I believe is an Olivier Polge composition. So in this one, it's actually a nice combination of those two notes. However, there's also a little bit of that um, sort of... Uh, faux, resinous, sweet quality in the base. I would imagine there's also a little bit of vanillin utilized in here as well. Vanillin also comes from vanilla. It's a uh, synthetic counterpart. And I like the touch of patchouli in the base. It just creates a nice bit of earthiness, but it's not overshadowing. And the most dominant notes in here, of course, are the rose, the carnation, the marabelle, and the pear. Now, it's fresh. Again, I don't know if it's entirely on account of the ambroxan or perhaps uh, some citrus that's in here. I know citrol and citronellol are some ingredients that are also found in citrus ingredients and a lot of times they're listed on the back here and I actually see citronellol and limonene which are also found in a lot of citrus ingredients and so they're kind of included in this fragrance as well. And so it opens up very bright and fresh but it also has a nice balance of those fruity and floral ingredients which kind of help bind the composition together. And so I really enjoyed this scent. This is actually one of my favorite releases for this year. I've always been a fan of Light Blue. I think the original Light Blue by Dolce Gabbana has a very characteristic DNA that is, I mean, it's done really, really well and you can tell it's been popular for such a long time. And I actually like Light Blue Sun because of the inclusion of those suntan lotion kind of notes. So it's a little salty, a little coconutty, but this one, it kind of takes the peony, adds this unconventional fruity note, and it also, 
it kind of reminds me of like a designer approach to Parfum de Marly's Delina. Delina also has rose and peony, but instead of using Maribel, they use lychee. And so they kind of also take this sort of fruity floral approach, but trying to do things in a way that's not conventional, in a way that is different and unique. And in my opinion, it's a breath of fresh air. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I do find this to be a unique fragrance just because it takes a familiar genre and it includes some notes that are a bit more on the unconventional side. The overall smell to my nose is incredibly pleasant. The only thing that I kind of don't like, I guess, is the fact that this is very non-linear. And so I love the introduction and the dry down, in my opinion, is a bit lackluster, but I always crave to smell the opening of the scent. It's just so addictive and so inviting. And I I would imagine that smelling it in the air, I don't think I've smelled this on any lady so far, but I would imagine that smelling it in the air would also be very pleasant as it is from smelling it on this test strip. In terms of the longevity of the scent, I got about six hours. Projection on this one, great for the first hour and a half. It didn't become a skin scent until about like the four and a half to five hour mark. So this is one where you probably want to be a little bit more liberal with the application. And I don't think you're going to offend because none of the notes in this composition are offensive. In terms of the versatility, like I said before, it's suitable for a wide variety of different social occasions. I think that this is one that's probably leaning a little bit more towards the casual side, but I can see this one being worn with a really nice dress. And also this is probably one that would really shine in the hotter weather. However, I can see this one being worn in the colder weather like the autumn seasons, uh, autumn season rather, autumn months I meant to say, but as long as it's worn in a climate controlled environment. And there is definitely something about the fruity and floral components that make it lean more into feminine territory. And it is marketed for women at the end of the day. The presentation for this one is really nice. I like what they did with the cap and I like the coloration inside the bottle. So my final verdict on this one is I personally really enjoyed this fragrance. If you are in the market for something that's fruity, floral, but definitely does things in an unconventional way, also something that doesn't have beast mode performance but something that is very versatile and definitely conveys feelings of flirtatiousness uh you know um sensuality and youthfulness i definitely think that that can be accomplished with dolce gabbana's dolce peony so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Dolce Peony by Dolce Gabbana. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would appreciate it if you can support this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click the red button down below. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. Never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you in the next episode.